<laughs> okay, hummingbird candy. So these are nature's hummingbird feeders and you might see a pattern here when you look at these pictures. They are red and they are tubular, although any of you all who sit and watch the hummingbirds, and I hope you are doing that, will see that they will go to many, many plants, not always tubular, not always red. Um, but as far as what are guarantees that are just beacons for them, are um, one of the earlier blooming plants would be the red buckeye, which is just a beautiful, um, all around nice size, um, you know, nice features to it, uh, shrub or kind of shrub-like tree for the, for the garden. And then cardinal flower, which is a short-lived perennial. Um, so it's one that only lasts a few years, but hopefully if you've got three or more or two or more, you'll get seed and, and those, as long as you have decent moisture, you'll get more of those coming up. Um, coral honeysuckle is the one that Larry is going to focus in on and talk a little bit more about, so I won't say too much. Um, bee balm is quite the spreading plant. It's in the same family as mountain mint. Um, but when it comes into bloom, it is just so showy as far as the Monarda didyma there, the red one. Um, but it can be a bit aggressive. It also can um, have some powdery mildew issues. I actually really love, as far as Monarda's, Fistulosa, which is that one in the middle, which is a soft um, lavender color. And it still attracts hummingbirds um, and bees and butterflies, actually. And it doesn't spread as, as vigorously. And then Indian pink. Um, we kind of had a hard time deciding whether to talk about Indian pink or uh, coral honeysuckle because Indian pink is just absolutely one of the finest um, natives that you can grow perennial wise in a partially sunny, partially shady area of your garden. It is, um, it's really stunning. So Larry? Hey, coral honeysuckle, there is no plant, I think, where you get more bang for your buck in terms of, of uh, hummingbirds. Y yes, hummingbirds do start early in the spring with the red buckeye. And, and then that passes on and they, they do not bloom anymore. But the coral honeysuckle starts in late spring, just as the red buckeyes are finishing. And if you choose the right selection of coral honeysuckle, uh, they can be in bloom all year until frost. And so, and so that's what I recommend. In fact, I have just, just this week, uh, I think Monday, I put up a, 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 an obelisk type trellis in my front yard just so that I could plant a coral honeysuckle and have it there along with everything else uh, because uh, we do have a couple of honey of uh, hummingbirds that hang around and I think the, the honeysuckle would be great for them. So you want to get good selections like uh, a major wheeler, uh, Alabama crimson. Uh, those are two uh, very good uh, selections of, of honeysuckle. Uh, there's one called Magnifica, and, and there may be some others coming on the market. Be sure you get ones that you know are going to be continuous bloomers. So you might do some internet research, but be sure you're getting the right ones. And uh, they might even make some fruits and berries like you see there. And those will hang on until frost and be attractive as well and be eaten by birds in the winter. Uh, honeysuckles are not aggressive vines. They're twiners. So they need a post or an arbor or a fence or something to climb up on. They don't, they don't uh, have clinging fruits, I mean uh, roots. They don't have clinging roots or, or tendrils or anything like that. So they're not going to be high climbers. And that's another part of their appeal. They're going to they're gonna stay uh, low growing on a fence or an arbor and, and bloom, 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 bloom. And, and even if you cut them back, they'll grow out and bloom, bloom, bloom some more. So you gotta, you gotta try uh, Carl Honeysuckle. The one, Larry, I'm just gonna pop in. There's one at Reedy Creek Nature Center and um, from the people who work there, it's become a joke that they can go out any day of the year and find a bloom. But I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Because it's one of the, ever, it's probably Major Wheeler, but no, no joke, I mean. They, no, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're winter hardy. The other two uh, hummingbird vines we have here, but we didn't choose as five best, is a cross vine and trumpet vine. 
uh, trumpet vine is a high climbing vine. If, if you plant that on a tree, it'll climb up the tree, you'll never see it again. Uh, so if you're gonna use cross vine or trumpet vine, put them on a post uh, or, or a fence or something, or an arbor, something that keeps them down low. Cross vine tends to bloom heavily only in the spring. Trumpet vine blooms all summer. There, there's no better hummingbird plant. Uh, the hummingbirds love it and it blooms with big showy flowers and they come in uh, several different colors, but it's a very aggressive and tough vine. So you would need a, a sturdy a trellis or post for, for the trumpet vine. And they tend to creep around the garden uh, a lot more than, than honeysuckles. So it's hard to beat coral honeysuckle, but these other two plants are, are very attractive in the garden, very good for hummingbirds as well. Yeah, my trumpet vine there, I um, had to eradicate it because I did put it in the garden on a post, but from the root suckers, it comes up everywhere. That's a good point. But I love it on a fence. I love it when I'm, you know, in other places, but I would not plant it in my mixed garden again. It needs to, you need to have a cow pasture. Yeah. So it can grow out on the, on the fence, on the wooden fence posts. One of its old common names is cow itch vine. Yes. And, uh, and that's because it's ubiquitous in the South out on fence posts in a cow pasture or okay. horse pasture. All right. I think we're, um, so someone j did just ask, isn't trumpet vine invasive? Well, that's what we're just describing. Yeah, all, is... all, uh, yeah, all of these vines will creep through the garden. Uh, we don't use the word invasive for natives. We use the word aggressive. Yeah. So, so. Uh, but it's, but it is, it is one of those that, again, I eradicated it from yeah. my garden, meaning. That, that's a good point. I, I can't recommend a trumpet right. vine for a small garden. Right. They're just too right. So, too, too but aggressive. for, you know, a fence out on the back of the property or something sure. like that. Um, sure. But as far as using the term invasive, it is fully a native plant. It is just a very, very, um, you know, uh, vigorous native it plant. It does what all vines do, which is to try to take over the trees. 